The Naked Body, a top to bottom tour through a human being. This week, Hemorrhage by James Fraser. An adult body normally contains about 5 litres, which is 10 pints of blood. The blood circulates from the heart to the lungs, to the heart again, and then to every cell in the rest of the body, before it returns to start the whole cycle again. At rest, this full circuit happens once every minute. When blood flows out of the arteries into the tissues, the pressure in the arteries drops, like when air is let out of a balloon, unless the heart is pumping blood into the arteries just as fast as it's leaving them. This means that if lots of cells are demanding more blood, for example, if you're using your muscles to run, the heart needs to pump more blood to maintain a constant arterial blood pressure. It's important to realise that the heart can't actually make blood. It can't pump blood into arteries faster than blood returns to it from the various organs and tissues of the body. If there's less blood in the system, the pressure in the system will tend to drop. If blood pressure even starts to drop, pressure detectors in the largest arteries signal to the brain via nerves. The brain then starts to ration blood flow. The blood vessels supplying many of your tissues constrict limiting blood flow out of the arteries in an attempt to maintain central blood pressure. Adrenaline also narrows veins and this helps to squeeze blood back to the heart. And you can actually feel this constriction of blood vessels as a horrible lurching, clenching sensation in your guts. The narrowing of blood vessels diverts blood away from less vital organs like the skin and the digestive system, but not all blood vessels respond to adrenaline. The signal to reduce blood flow is actually ignored by your vital organs because they lack the necessary receptors to even detect the signal. This means that blood flow can be maintained to the really vital organs, the brain, the heart, the lungs, and the gonads. Because remember that from an evolutionary perspective, testes and ovaries are indeed vital organs. You can actually see this diversion of blood from less essential areas because the skin will go pale and cold. In order to recover, the body needs to replace the lost blood volume. The most obvious way to do this is by drinking, and indeed, loss of blood causes a severe thirst. Reports from battlefields often mention the sound of injured men pleading for water. At the same time as thirst, the kidneys reduce urine output to a trickle. But what happens if blood loss continues faster than it can be replaced? Well, once the body loses more than about two of its starting five litres of blood, the body will start to go into what's called circulatory shock. Shock means that cells are beginning to die from the lack of blood supply. The first organs to be affected will be the less vital ones, including the kidneys and the gut, while the brain is relatively protected. But as organs start to die, the body's ability to circulate blood and to divert it towards the vital organs, will start to fail. So, untreated, shock quickly leads to death. Fortunately, this degree of blood loss is very uncommon. Our bodies are usually very good at limiting bleeding by clotting and so on, and by quite quickly replacing any lost blood through drinking. So we are able to maintain our blood pressure almost all the time so that our cells and organs get all the blood they need. In fact, a much more common problem in the Western world is high blood pressure. But that is another story.